All right, it is the Geekery Store Championships from November 20th, 2016. Actually, the second store championship of the store in 2016. Uh, we're only going to do the elimination rounds here. So this is game one. Uh, on the left, we have Dan, the fourth seed, playing Envisant Max. And on the right, we have the first seed, Kenny, playing Dedication IG. And to make things a bit more interesting, I brought in some extra commentary. We have one of the top four people from this tournament, Jason Dang with us. What's up, Jason? Hey, what's happening? All right, what happened in this game so far? We got a, a Howard and an Ice. Yeah, so IG, so this is the, the Hinky's IG 49. Um, with the dedication ceremony, with dedication it just ceremony. kills you out of hand, right? Uh, oh, it's it, a feedback filter, though. That'll, yeah. that'll save him. Yes, correct. So, in my opinion, um, with the feedback filter, this max should be uh, extremely favored. Um, we'll, we'll have to see what sort of tricks Kenny pulls out. But right. Well, it needs to get a bunch of money for the feedback filter, right? Usually, you, well, would, ha you would have an opus if you're a shaper. Yeah, well, you just saw um, Temujin contracts there. So. That's a lot, but it's not infinite money right you can eventually run out especially if he starts trashing things right he's got to trash uh bio whatever that you know the net damage every turn thing and right i mean there is ig only has um you know a certain number of tricks it can pull um but with feedback filter you know Basically, you can just set up a medium and run R&D. There's no mm. um, snares. Um, but the biggest oh. problem is that Dan here doesn't know that. Um, uh. I believe this is probably the first time he's played against this deck. In New York, really? How yeah. did you avoid this deck in New York? Right. Uh, <laughs> I agree. But, you know, Kenny is, is icing everything because he knows... Um, I guess he doesn't know exactly what max he's playing against, That's but it. most maxes are going to be playing a count siphon. We saw uh, the uh, the Temujin out here. Yeah. Um, so this yeah, it's hard to use that Temujin now because you can't use it on a Howard. Right. And the other everything else is iced up. Right. And he probably also doesn't know what ice it is, right? And where did he point the Temujin? I think he pointed the Temujin at. The Howard, really? which means that the Temujin... Is now pointing nowhere? Yeah. Yeah, the server doesn't exist anymore, so Why, that's, that's, that's what they're that's discussing a, That's right a now. big mistake right there. Right, that's a big mistake. I'd at least point it at an R&D or HQ and just wait until it was safe later. Or... Right. It's like you could have made him trash the Howard just by running it. You didn't need to install a Temujin to make the Howard go away. Right. Maybe he doesn't know the rule. I don't know. Um, you make top four without knowing that rule. It's it, possible. Uh, is he in trouble because he's max losing a bunch of cards, and then IG is gonna try to kill him, but his stack will be empty? He shouldn't be in trouble. I mean, again, because like you can't have worse if you don't have right. There's a very simple plan against this deck, and it's take Temujin money. Um, he's gonna hit a. Uh, I think it's gonna be a. Yeah, Cortex, Cortex lock. lock. So that Mimic doesn't help him except that it minus one MU. So that's still three net damage. Um, and he didn't install the feedback filter yet. He could lose it right now. Yeah, he could lose it right now. Is he going to lose it? He no, did, he, did he did not. Oh, and he has a... Uh, Retrieval run, I saw. He has Employee Strike. So, oh, that's I mean... Good. That's going to help. Um, again, I, I think this max should have been almost 90% to win against this deck. Mm -hmm. Um you install your mediums, you put Temujin on, even R&D is fine, right? Like, the, the only ice that's in this deck is Cortex Lock, Vanilla, and uh, the one cost... Crick? Crick, mm. that's right. So, you know, Cortex Lock is blank if you install all your programs mm, um, really? so you, you, that's the best way to break it is just just to fill up your mu and i mean even in this situation right the temujin you see there's no cards in archives right so against the jinteki of any kind you're assuming an archives ice like that is going to be a crick right 
Like I would have, I would have installed the Temujin on archives and just gone for it and hoped it was Crick, which is n currently useless. Right. And I would be able to unload the Temujin before there's either shocks in archives or a non Crick ice or you know. Uh, I think that's tough to say. I think, I think it actually m probably makes more sense to just put it on R and D. Um. I mean, that's fine, too. It's better than nowhere. Right. Yeah. For so sure, it's better than right. nowhere. So he's got the genetics thing. He can't draw more than two a turn, right? Right. And uh, Max's ability counts as one card. Oh, snap. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. That's rough. <laughs> so scrubber and feedback filter. Um, I don't know. I I just don't feel like board state matters at all. Uh, if you have feedback filter, right? Like you just slam you just down. Need, you just need money. Yeah, you need money, and then you need to run R and D. There's nothing in R and D that you're really afraid of. Oh, is that the tech startup? Yeah. So that could become a Ronin. A Ronin, and then you're in trouble. So. Right. Usually, the first tech startup that you have becomes Howard, which lets you fill archives. Uh, yeah, he wasn't able to fill archives with the original Howard. Right, and then the second tech startup. You either leave on the board, um, or you know, depending on the matchup, you could fetch um, hostile or genetics pavilion, or just just leave it there. He lost to David. That doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, the only David at ice is Crick on archives. Right. So this deck is pretty fast, right? It runs Sensi's Actors Union, and it runs a whole bunch of uh, traps as well. Yeah, I'm surprised the Sensi hasn't come out yet. Yeah. It, well, there's it only... Could be the, it could be over there right now. There's only two of them. Oh, um, okay. It's three influence, right? It is two influence. Two. Uh, that's so evil. Yeah, but they the... They messed that one up. <laughs> <laughs> I think they messed a lot of the political assets up. The thing is, the political assets are totally fine and fair in something that's not IG that prevents you from trashing them, right? Like, if someone puts out, you know, what's the Whalen one that gives you three credits every turn, right? Right, commercial it, bankers. It's group. only like two to trash or something, or three. It's really cheap to get rid of. Right. So if someone puts that out, they res it, they get it once, and then you remove it. It's not a big deal if you just play that in a normal, you know, Whalen deck. But as soon as you play it in you know, some kind of IG where, like, you can't get rid of it and it has some other non-ice protection, you know. Then right. It be, then it just, it's just wrong. Yeah, I mean, the three IDs that they really shine in are Kagarin, IG, CTM. and CTM. Yeah. All right, so all all three of the... All three of the corps have an ID, which you can use it in. Because, like, if you think about them on their own, it's like, oh, this is totally fair because you can't ice it up, so you could never, you know, make a huge killing off of this card so it's okay for it to be super strong but then there's some other way to protect it and that makes it not cool right and they also printed a mumbad virtual tour um mm. there are ways to dodge mumbad virtual tour by not hovering a lot of credits yep um that's generally advised as well against ctm because imp, ctm has closed accounts yeah right. yeah imp, uh, even if the virtual tour takes your money you can still imp the other uh, thing right yeah, and, and, nobody, virtual, and virtu no one plays Singularity either. Virtual Tour is a very strange card anyway, um, because it will force an imp counter. Yep. Um, which is But you can still choose which cases. order you access, right? So yeah, yeah. If yeah, you yeah. know which one's the tour, right. you can... You can... It, and you don't have five credits, but you do have an imp token. You right. can choose the non-Virtual Tour, imp it, and then you can dodge the virtual tour. Mm -hmm. So, right, so the second Howard went out. Yeah, he only has two credits, so he's he's still in danger here. So the combo, the the normal combo that this deck wants to pull off, is on the board. Have hero, hero, a Ronin, a Ronin, and a, a bioethics, mm -hmm. and so. The hero gets rezzed at the end of the runner's turn so that they have to discard to three. Yep. 
the bioethics hits them for one, mm -hmm. and then you dedication, use dedication serve. advance, click, and that does three net. Right, because you cause in. that's the main drawback of Ronin. It's like you you can't Ronin all in one turn because it's too many advancements plus the click to actually use it. But the dedication ceremony gets around that because right, and the um, bioethics is a clickless net damage. Mm. Right, you need all three of those clicks to hit Ronin, so you don't have time to neural them. But if he, he, that combo is like the minimum needed to kill them, right? So the feedback filter, he only needs three credits to avoid one of those damage. It's the minimum needed to kill them from five. Right. Um, if you have less than five, he's in trouble. Right. So the great thing about Genetics Pavilion is that it costs so much to trash. And the moment that they hit any trap, and those traps include Psychic Fields, they include mm -hmm. some of your agendas, right? If you hit... Um, uh, fetal AI, fetal AI he's, yes, he's three fetals, feet? oh, three okay. fetals, um, and so I don't think Chris originally was running fetals. You you have to run the three fetals. The, the fetals are are extremely necessary. Well, I guess without snare, right? And I guess it's better than snare in a way because it only does one less damage. It's, but you don't have to pay the four credits to activate it. Right, it's much it's free. It's much better than snare because it's free. Ig wants to be on around two credits right two credits is the minimum that you need to do the dedication um ronin combo and two credits is also great because you can dodge siphons mm. um and in the current meta in this tournament there were quite a few siphon decks out there yeah this is only one data pack ago right this tournament yes there was no no martial law so kenny's got a few face down cards now um and it looks like Dan's still trying to control the board state, which it's not completely unreasonable. He he still has that very sad Temujin out there. Didn't even get four credits off of it. Yeah. Uh, another good thing is actually if you have bioethics out there, so Genetics Pavilion only works on your turn. Uh, which means if the bioethics hits I've had worse, you draw all three cards. I thought it limits you. Doesn't turn. limit them to two draws. It limits them to two draws on your on the runner's turn. Oh, it's not each turn. Correct. It's the runner. Okay. It is the runner's turn. Mm. So, popping car on their turn draws three cards, mm. um, and you know other other sort of paidability effects. We got a hostile. Hostile, again, great for dodging siphons. If he has a cortex lock on HQ, which I guess he has. Oh, what he installed on that, um, on that hostile is the Breaker Bay Grid. Oh, to get a res for free. To get a res for free, right. Uh, so now... But if he wants to dodge a siphon, he doesn't have to use that. He could... Right. He's got nine credits, I think. Right. So So what's on HQ, I'm going to guess, is another Cortex lock. Mm -hmm. So five, two, that's seven. He's at two credits. He can still do the combo. Yep. And he dodges the siphon. So there's, there's quite a bit of math. I mean, he can even let the siphon happen at nine, and he'd go down to four. You never want to let the siphon happen, right? Especially with feedback filter on the board. Oh, right, the feedback filter. Yeah. So you want to keep them poor because then they can't trash your assets and, or they can't prevent net damage. And you are okay with playing poor. You playing poor doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. Those political assets cost one and zero. And you only need two credits to do your combo. Again, this, is, this deck... Uh, manages to avoid a lot of the shortcomings of Jinteki net damage. So, back when Chris came out strong with his Cambridge PE, uh, you know, you had to play agendas like Gila Hands in order to click up for credits. Well, yeah. So, credits have always been a problem for Jinteki. Um, well, because Chris refused to play um, 
a uh, celebrity gift, right? He didn't want to show you what was in his hand. Right. But ev I think everyone else who tried to play it immediately put in celebrity gift. Like, why is this not in here? This is the card Jinteki uses to get money, right? But not needing to get money at all is even better because now those slots that used to be econ cards are now dangerous things that are free. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean... Because that was always the problem. If you tried to build one of these decks, you, you make a list of all the dangerous cards you want, and you can't put three copies of all of them. They just don't fit without you know, some enormous deck. Right. And especially with PE, most of those deck slots are one-point agendas. Yep. And now you can run things like food or you know, Future Perfect. Yeah. And this, this oh, that's the medium. That oh. medium he should have installed. Yep. Um, I mean, even if he wasn't going to use the medium right now, it takes up an MU for the Cortex. Yeah, thing. and again, sort of, it's it's really hard to, if you haven't, there's the Fetal. Mm. Um, again, just a great trap. Uh, you, IG, uh, Dan Digenio used to say with IG, um, the first five point, the first five or six points are free. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, it's, can you get the last couple of points, which... Generally, you bury them in archives face down. Now your Jackson Howards are impossible to trash. And if they run archives, they're going to take three net from shocks. <laughs> and then it's going to shuffle it back in, and then you kill them the next turn. So they have to win that turn, which is why medium is so important, right? You want to build medium counters in the early game. Have those medium counters that, you know, the... IG always wants to either advance their board state or discard cards, so they don't really have time to clear virus tokens. And then, um, you know, at the end, the medium with four counters is going to see four fresh cards to get the, the final two points. But that's only if you know that he doesn't have snare, mm. right? So this deck has actually gone through... I mean, even though I've played against this IG in, in you know, every evil New York Jinteki deck many times, right? I basically assume they all have snare right from the get-go. Right. I would never imagine there would be zero snares. Right. I mean, again, this, this deck has gone through many iterations. Er, there was a version of this deck that ran zero psychic fields. Yeah, no, Chris got ri didn't run Psychic Field for a long time. Right. But that still doesn't mean you could just run all the remotes totally safely. <laughs> right, right. It, he, you know, it, it, it just depends on when you practice against your opponents, what do they think their best line is? Mm -hmm. And then you change your deck the day of the tournament to play on those spheres. So if they never run right. your remotes. There's, here's the Psychic Field. Yep big side game well the other thing is you know people play a certain list um you know from the internet right so whatever is hot right now so if psychic fields are hot right now you know you could not play them but gain the advantages of people being afraid of them right right exactly and then instead like what he's doing here is these people are afraid of snare but he's just not playing them but getting the you know some of the advantages of having it right Right, for sure. And that frees up the deck slots for other good cards that Jinteki just has so many of. Mm. So he's got one card in his hand and one card in the stack. <laughs> but there's the same old thing. So is there a levy that we didn't see? It's hard to see the, um, yeah, the, the, heat, archives. From the heat from here. Got a lot of money to use on a, a feedback filter. Right. I think it's 12, so you can block. It's like having a hand of five cards. Right. You can block four. Um, but, I mean, technically, he has three face down cards. Those three face down cards. Oh, no, no. But one of them is a psychic field. So, mm -hmm. um, there's no way for Kenny to win. Uh, this turn, but right. every net damage that he does is three credits drained. Yep. And he has no cards in his hand, so uh, sometimes in a, in a place like this, if you have com more combo cards in hand, you might even want to fire um, a Ronin and just 
drain his credits. Sure. He has nine credits, wow. Just put an ice on the... Yeah, I don't think that's ridiculous. Um, it makes his his assets that much more spiky. Mm. Uh, yeah, he already like, he already saw the employee strike, right? Oh. So the employee strike could come out, right? And then bit. he could trash bioethics and stuff. Mm. But now bioethics has a built-in three credit cost because you don't want to take the net damage. So he saw he basically look, he right he did that after looking through there's the levy right after looking through the runner's heap so I guess he saw that he had a chance you know some line of play where he can get rid of the uh, hostile infrastructure and then remove other things right yeah I mean runners can't really afford I mean, yeah to you have hostile. to levy now you have no cards left right but levy right so you only draw two cards from the levy. Oh, that thing even affects the levy. Yes. That's just so evil. Yes, it's extremely evil. But you can't trash it first because you'll take a net damage. It'll cost you at least, well, it'll cost you three credits to get rid of that. Plus, no, 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 it's five credits. Cost you five and more, more, right? Because he has cards face down. It's a five credit asset. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's been five plus the face downs. And plus, then he, would, he wouldn't be able plus to... Plus the net damage. Plus yeah. avoiding the net damage because he has no cards in his hand, so he'd have to pay three. Yes. And then he wouldn't have five for the levy after that. So he has no choice except to levy into two cards. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's in a he's in a really tough spot now. It, it all goes back to that just that Temujin, right? If he had that Temujin money, imagine if that money was over there next to the five credit. Right. And not on a blue card. Well, I don't I don't think it's... Like it, would, it might not have saved the whole game, right. but he would be definitely, you know, have a lot more options. Right, for sure. Um, but no, it, it comes it comes to... Against a deck like this, which actually goes pretty fast, you should have a strategy, and you should um, stick... Or you should, you should figure out what the right strategy is, right? And... No, you're right. I think I think I think it does come back to the time engine. He can he can he has the money and he has a scrubber and he has the feedback filter. So he could have he could have um contested board state. Right? He could have ran archives when necessary. Or even play the the employee strike. Yep. And then had all the Temujin credits to trash everything. So yeah, he had he had two lines of play here. And um and maybe is that a rebirth? Whoa! What? Oh, I guess rebirth would actually be good here. Yeah, rebirth into because wizard. you can stop using the max power and killing your stack. Right. And and wizard. That's three credits that you're using sure. to trash all this stuff. Yeah, I guess wizard's the best choice, right? You wouldn't want to choose. Yeah. No, you know. it's it's wizard. Wizard or bust. Um, you can like basically if you had enough money and his board state was blank. You can make an argument that you want to rebirth into Ed Kim. But he doesn't have operations. Re oh, but except for the dedication ceremony. Right. Well, the dedication ceremony is the way to win. Sure. So yeah. you take out his, his out. Yeah, he's already used two Howards, right? So if you were to get rid of the dedication ceremonies. He can't bring him back. Yeah, that would be it. Yep. And then what's he going to do? Advance his Ronin and let you see that? I don't think he has that. Aaron. Right. Yeah, and there's actually no. Again, he doesn't know this, right? You could say maybe splash a single June bug, mm. but there's nothing advanceable in this deck except Ronin and agendas. And agendas. So if the advance is that you want to run it, right? <laughs> so now, um, Kenny, Kenny's board state is is getting a little out of control. He does not have any face down cards. Is that right? Uh. I think he might have just been looking at them. Are those them? In his hand now. That's his hand. <laughs> there were some recently. Right. And he hasn't Howarded since then. No, he has. It, right? Isn't that what the second Howard was for? All right. Maybe. I'm not going to rewind it. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, Kenny is just. Probably not 
he might honestly start advancing things now. Um, once he has like a really good, good board state. Um, obviously, you can if you start advancing Ronins, deal six net from Ronin, sure, and then change the, change the uh, economy game. Uh, I mean, if you got two Ronins, right? You you feel okay using one, right? Okay, so he's rezzing multiple hostels, and then hopefully he's gonna want a Howard. Um, the bioethics back. The third Howard is probably gonna be for bioethics, and now those bioethics have two net plus a bunch of money, yep. and you just grind them out. I think I remember like the earliest versions of the IG deck had you know the museums and whatnot going on to bring all the things back over and over again, but apparently that's not necessary, right? You just kill them with just the Howard recursion only. Well, that that deck had a few um, different lines. I I I think that deck is is still better than this one. I think that de the the museum version also I think was before dedication ceremony came out, and you were no they 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 were both popular at the same time. Oh, were they? Okay. Yeah. Um, even before the errata. Um, yeah, when there was more than one museum. That was just ridiculous. But even one museum is fine. Right. You don't. You yeah, IG fifty four has has come back in the style. Um, and they play. Completely differently. <laughs> I hear myself talking because <laughs> I was closest to the camera. Right. <laughs> when I was chatting it up. <laughs> oh, the runner is moneying up. He's got a lot. He's got daily cash. He's got the liberated. He's got the scrubber. Yeah, it looks like he has. Um, I think there's 12 credits just on the table. Yeah, he, he has a lot of money in this deck. Um, no, nope. there's the medium again. Let's see if he installs it this time. Yeah, he does. Okay. So he's got three out of uh, three out of the necessary four MU. Yeah, and he still has he still has lines, right? And me again, medium is not a terrible line. Um, unfortunately, when he steals three fetals or when he steals a, two more foods, um, most of the time with a board state like this, one of those face down cards. <laughs> is um uh philotic mm. now that philotic does three damage as well <laughs> that is a fetal ai all right it's going to four points now yep he's running the runners the fetal is is a, is a trap it's you're fine putting him face down you're fine in your hands the only place you don't want them in is, is in archives because they don't fire. I'll keep I'll keep a hand of like three fetals. Sure. In the early game. They don't they don't cost you anything to fire. And for, you know people are like HQ is the place they're most afraid to run against. Right. Jinteki, right? Yes. Oh, he still has that sad, that sad Temujin. I wonder if he has more Temujin. You know what's really funny about this Temujin? If he doesn't have another Temujin, this is only he can't, one. He can't recur it. Oh, there's no way for him to get rid of it. Yeah, there's no way for him to get rid without of it without like a pawn shop or or a second Temujin. So oh, because it's unique, so you can you can get rid of one by installing another one. Right, and then you can point it at another server. If you're spending the influence on Temujin, why wouldn't you get more than one? That seems like it's like a card you want early and often. Right. Would you know? I see most people who splash it splash two or three. Oh, he's got two mediums. All right, so this is oh, a, so this now is a he good can, plan. He can go to town now. Yeah, go to town. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Imagine that ice means nothing now. You got ten credits to block any net damage from like a shock or something. Right. How many cards is in a hand though? Because if you see a lot of cards at once, well, I guess you're not going to see Fetal AI at least. Uh, is that TFP? It is TFP. Oh, he's got money to play. He's got. Oh, this is this could be. Oh, that would be the game if he yeah. takes this. Uh, wait, what? Uh, maybe it wasn't TFP. Maybe it wasn't TFP. And yeah, we couldn't see what those were. Yeah. But I guess they weren't TFP. 
How many cards? He's seen a lot of oh, cards. Sensi. Sensi. He hasn't fired a single Sensi this game. That's I guess he sad. just was unlucky and didn't draw one. Yeah. If he I mean, had one earlier, the game probably be over already. Well, be to, to be perfectly honest, um, you you don't want to draw. You don't want to get flooded. But drawing well, Sensi at least is, half of your agendas in IG is actually pretty good. Right. Sensi is optional, too. You can install it, res it, use it a bunch, and then be like, I've had enough Sensi. You know, I've drawn enough. Right. Oh, there he goes. He's advancing things. Okay. So they're not. So June, we know they're not June bugs. Right, but like, why? I guess June bug is the only reason you wouldn't just run that. Right. Yeah. Especially with all that money. Yeah. Let's right, see if he runs it. Uh, taking the liberated money first is a good idea. Strike. Strike. Good. Yeah. There's one He's, hostile infrastructure, yeah, no, but that's two. There's two oh, hostiles. Two. Oh, I see the, both of them yeah, now. It's tough. Uh, how many? Look at all those face down cards and archives, though. What's the cost going to be? No, run? nothing. He he put employee strike down. Oh right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, employee strike make actually the the saddest. And he's got the scrubber. Right. Yeah. Hostiles effect. He, he shouldn't be trashing things. He's got two mediums. Yeah, yeah. You, you're going to see a ton of cards. Yeah. And it's like, yes, you'll go a little bit deeper if you trash stuff, but... Right. Oh, uh, the dedication. Okay. Psychic fields. Bioethics. I feel like all the agendas are in HQ, right? Or on the table. Or, or face down. Or face yeah. down on the table. So or the, archives. The worst... Right. So when the, someone plays two mediums, you're not going to let agendas be in R&D. Right. The worst... Current is not employee strike for this deck. It's rumor mill, because rumor mill turns off both Jackson and it turns off Hero. Uh. So while turning off Hero is, you don't get the two points for trashing the Hero, right? But it turns off one of the win conditions. Mm. So it's pretty bad when you see people I, slap rumor mill down. Right, I saw there was a rumor mill in his hand that he never played. Right, and like I thought about rumor mill, and I'm like, huh, does that affect this deck? You know, what's unique here? Yeah, right. It's like, you know, I guess yeah, hero and Howard, but actually, I think the I think the genetics pavilion is unique as well. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. So. So yeah, it's yeah, but it's like it's usually very when painful. you think about rumor mill, you just think about things like Ash and Caprice and whatnot. Right. Um, it it has a lot of si um, and and you know, there's a lot of these these cards that have come out that have these side effects. Um, that said, at this tournament at least, the top two were IG, so it wasn't strong enough. I think both of us were playing two currents. Um, I think Kenny here is playing um, two scarcity of resources. Oh, that's the best. Yeah, it's really good. When I saw, I was usually I see a card spoiled, and I'm like, sometimes I'll be like, yeah, and sometimes I'll be like, that card is the best, and often I'm just wrong. Like there's a card I see, and I'm like, I want to play that so bad, and then I play it, and it doesn't work, and it's garbage. But scarcity of resources, I saw that, I'm like, that's the best, and every time I've played it, it the runner's just like, oh no. Yeah. And there's very few runners who are doing zero resources now because the resources are just too good. Right. Like yeah. Temujin is just too good. How can you not play it? Yeah. And, you know, even non-Temujin people always want to supplement their economy with daily casts. Right. Well, I mean, that, that was the idea, right? It's like, you know, resources are supposed to be more powerful because they're more fragile, right? They could be trashed and whatnot. Right. right. So there's, a, you know, but for a long time, it's like they were about equal with, you know, events, you know, and, and other econ sources. So you could play non-resources decks. But now I think everyone's playing a resource deck, which is why tags well, are even better. Resources also came back into into play because some of the events, well, specifically Dirty Laundry started becoming a liability. Yep. You get killed hard hitting a dirty laundry. You could get killed playing a dirty laundry, was, even on I, turn I was, two. I was killed playing a dirty laundry at this tournament. Someone had like the just the perfect instant kill hand on turn one. Uh, so I think they just did a setup on turn one, and I played. I just played a dirty laundry, and I took a bunch of money. So right, and then I died on turn two. So Kenny just scored his 
Philotic, as I mentioned, um, was likely to happen um, at a late game stage like this. Uh, I believe it did two net damage, but that's still a lot, right? I believe I believe Dan right now has zero cards in his hand, and so a lot of things can kill him at this point. Mm. He's only got five credits for the feedback filter. Oh, I think it's one card in hand and enough credits to use feedback filter twice. Right. So four damage would do him in. Yep. So that would be bioethics. So here, hero doesn't matter, but you would need bioethics. Oh, he just drew a second card. So now, now it's still a five card, but... Again, feedback f feedback filter is <laughs> actually an extreme. Right. Well, I mean, even if it doesn't kill them, it slows them down by like gives you a whole extra turn to get closer to killing them. Right. Because you know, now they have to draw back up, even though they can only draw two. Uh, he's gonna dig some more. I mean, with four points. You know what would be a funny strategy for Kenny to employ here? He could have. Oh no! But he has he ha he already used two Jacksons. If he oh, had no, more he Jacksons, he hit a shock yeah, like he a could have Jackson back like three, like a face down and like a shock or whatever. He just got shocked in the R and D there. Yeah, he got shocked. Yeah, so so, so in a game like this, these shocks are huge. That's you're gonna keep running R and D and get shocked every time, or are you gonna pay to trash it? It's like oh, there's oh, the future. There's the TFP. I was gonna say, you know. Oh, did he steal it? No, no, no. no. He he doesn't realize he has to play the he game. He has to now. play the game. Um, yeah, I mean, you have to imagine there's Jinteki. There's a TFP in the deck somewhere. If I saw that many cards off R and D with the medium, right? I'd go to HQ once, right? What's you know what's the worst the one ice can do? Uh, okay, <laughs> I mean, maybe. I'd definitely do it if I rebirthed and died Kim. Sure. Oh, no dice. Did not win the game. See, but now if he wants to play the game again, he's going to get shocked again. Yeah. And then he's basically... Well, then Kenny would be in an interesting spot because he only has got three credits. So here, credits are coming into play. You need two credits to do the combo. Oh. And you need You need three credits to do the combo and... To res a bioethics. Mm. Yeah. So if he spends money defending the TFP, he won't be able to kill him if he wins the side game. Right. But obviously, if you lose the side game, it's over. So I think you just have to right. yeah. spend whatever you're going to well, spend. Well, no, on the no. Side it, game. It, it puts an extra layer of complexity, right? Yeah. Because I think one or two credits, especially with hitting the shock, maybe you don't need to res bioethics. So now mm. you can choose zero or one. Oh, that's true. Um, and then you could say, oh, I, I pay two because the runner only thinks I'll pay zero or one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, TFP is the bottom card. Oh, you know what? That TFP got to the bottom because of... One turn of Sensi. One turn of Sensi. Yeah. So there's got to be three TFPs So here, in see? There. He paid two. He paid two. Oh, he paid the two. Yeah. Yeah, there's dedication. It's over. Oh, he already had an advancement token. Oh. Uh, so that's why one was okay for him. Mm. So that's it. Game over. Kenny wins. Okay. Let's see if that recorded properly.